A huge thanks to Brian for sponsoring this video. <coughs> video. Today. It's not from a competition or anything. It's just an exponential equation. Try it out for yourself. We are going to solve this one and later we are going to generalize it. Hope you are going to enjoy the video and we are going to dive right in. But before we do, have you checked out my second channel yet, Flemmy Sword? Uploading regularly over there. Link up here in the info box or down here in the description. Check it out. And now we are going to dive right in. So this right here is an exponential equation. But the thing is, we have different bases. How would you solve something like this? Well, there are actually various different ways you could do so. And I'm going to present you my most favorite method at first, which is the most intuitive one actually, then another one using the change of base formula. And at the very end, we are going to generalize this right here just very nicely. So the first thing that we are going to do is we are going to take the natural log on both sides. As always, I'm going to denote the natural log as just being log. So we are going to take the natural log on both sides of three to the x is equal to the natural log of 4 to the x minus 1. Okay, so the cool thing about logarithms is that with the help of logarithms we can bring the exponent to the front. So the x to the front and the whole x minus 1 to the front. Now, when we do this, what we're going to end up with is the following. Namely, we're going to get x times the natural log of 3 is equal to x minus 1 times the natural log of 4. <clears throat> and now we already came pretty far because the cool thing is we can now distribute the logarithm of 4 into each and every part here using the distributive property of the real numbers giving us x times log of 4 minus and now just log of 4. And now we already came pretty far. What we can do now is we can subtract x log of 4 on both sides because then we get x as a common factor on one side which we can factor out using the distributive property once again. So we are going to get x log of 3 minus x log of 4 is equal to negative log of 4. And now we can factor out the x as mentioned before. If we were to factor it out, we are going to end up with x times log of 3 minus log of 4 being equal to negative log of 4. Now the last thing that we are going to do is we are going to divide by the coefficient of x to solve for our x obviously. We can divide both sides by it because it's obviously not equal to 0 because log of 3 is not equal to log of 4 because the logarithm is, um, if we draw it, strictly increasing. Yeah, that's a nice argument, so <laughs> most definitely not equal to 0, giving us that our final answer x is equal to negative log of 4 divided by log of 3 minus log of 4. And thus we are done. This right here is the answer. You can play around with log of 4 a tiny little bit more. 4 is 2 squared, so you can bring 2 to the front end. And then you are basically done with that. But yeah, this right here is the solution. Pretty cool, right? There's also another way to do this. And this is by getting ourselves the 2 to the x power. So a whole exponentiation right here on both sides. And using the exponentiation property that we can basically do um, a to the x divided by b to the x is equal to a divided by b to the x power. This is something that we can do and then we can take logarithms once again. Let us do this real quick. At first what we are going to notice is that 4 to the x minus 1 is the same as 4 to the x times 4 to the negative 1 or 1 quarter. So if we were to rewrite this we are going to get um, 3 to the x is equal to and then we are going to get 4 to the x times 4 to the negative 1 or 1 quarter. Now with that out of the way what we can do is we can divide both sides by 4 to the x. It's obviously not equal to 0 for no real x. Meaning we are going to get 3 to the x power divided by 4 to the x power is equal to 1 quarter 4 to the negative 1. And now we can make use of the exponentiation property that I have shown you a second ago. Meaning what we can do is we can basically factor out, <laughs> it's not factoring out, it's just um, bring, it, bring it out or just exponentiation of, of a fraction. Is there a name for that in, in English? I think in German it's, what is it? It's an exponentiation rule just for 
for fractions. I don't give a fuck, it's just something. I have shown you what it is, you probably know what it is. 3 quarters to the x power is equal to 4 to the negative 1. And now what we can do is we can either take natural log on both sides or what we can also do, and this makes use of the, um, of the, of the chain of base formula in a second, we can take the log to the 3 quarters power. Why should we do that? Let us do this real quick. We are going to take the log to a fractional base, 3 quarters, of 3 quarter to the x power. Now why are we doing this? The cool thing is, what we can do now is we can bring the exponent to the front yet again, giving us x times log to the 3 quarters base, or 3 quarters. Now the thing with log to the base of a of a is that this is always going to evaluate to 1. This is just how the logarithm has been defined, meaning we can actually solve for our x already, giving us in the process on the other side, because we need to take the log to the 3 quarters base, also on this side, 4 to the negative 1 power. Or in other words, if we were to track the negative 1 to the front as the exponent, negative log base 3 quarters of 4. Now this is curious, can you type something like this in your calculator? I don't think so. So to make this a bit more clear, I'm going to write it out. This is x is equal to negative log to the 3 quarters base of 4. And we are going to make use of the change of base formula. It's, it's the best formula that you can find out there for the logarithm. It's, it's the most useful formula and we are going to derive it real quick because it really doesn't take long. It's really easy to derive but very satisfying. Now I want you guys to remember how the logarithm has been defined. If we have a to the b power is equal to some value c, what you want to do with the logarithm of any kind of base is to find out what the exponent b up here is. Now what we are going to do usually is we are going to take the log base a on both sides and by the same means as I have shown you before the log base a and a is going to cancel out leaving us just with the exponent b is equal to log base a of c. So this right here is one expression for our exponent b. This is exactly what we have done here. Now on the other hand, we can do something different. We can take the same ansatz that we did up here initially. We can take the natural log on both sides or any other logarithm, actually log base 10 or log base pa. I really don't care. So just to make matters easier, we are going to take the natural log now on both sides because this is something that you can type in your calculator. If we take the natural log on both sides, so log of a to the c of power, uh, a to the b of power, is equal to the natural log of c. Now the cool thing is we can track the b to the front once again, giving us b times log of a is equal to log of z. And now we can divide both sides by log of a under the condition that it's not equal to zero, so a must not be equal to one, giving us that the exponent b is also equal to the natural log of c divided by the natural log of a. But remember what b, our exponent, also is. It's log base a of c. Now what can we take away from this formula that we have gotten right here? Change of base formula t tells us that if we have the log to a base a of c, this is equal to the natural log or any other log of c, so the argument that we have in here, divided by the same logarithm that we have chosen for the um, change of base, of our original base. Meaning if we were to apply this to what we've gotten right here, we can also say that x is equal to negative log of our original argument 4 divided by, and now we are going to get the logarithm of our base. So the logarithm of 3 quarters. But the cool thing with logarithms is that we can make use of the function equation for the logarithm to turn our denominator into, so this is negative log of 4, divided by log of 3 minus log of 4. Hey, and hence we are done. This is once again the solution that we have gotten previously. So this is cool, right? Now we are going to generalize this whole thing a tiny little bit. And for generalization, the way of solving the whole thing is going to be this one, because it's a tiny bit easier, in my opinion, and a bit quicker. Now how can we generalize this? We could generalize the basis, obviously. So we are going to take a and b for the basis. Hmm. Okay, so this is like the first thing. So we are going to get a is equal to b something. Now 
we can generalize this a bit more. I want you guys to notice that we had x as the exponent here. But we don't need just one x. We can have 2x on this side and 5.4x on the other side. So we can also say that we have some mx up here and some, um, I don't know, sx over here. But also we could have any other part over here. So giving us constant terms on both sides. Meaning we could also have um, plus n on the side and plus t on the side. Please note that m and n are not natural numbers. They are just random arbitrary real numbers. Um, and now we can solve this whole thing. Now remember what we have done before. We are going to take the natural log on both sides. And then we are going to drag the exponent to the front giving us mx plus n times the natural log of a is equal to sx plus t times the natural log of b. Okay, now next thing that we're going to do is we're going to distribute our log of a and log of b into everything respectively, giving us overall mx times the log of a plus n times the log of a is equal to sx log of b plus t times log of b. And once again, we are going to bring everything that is not x to the right hand side and everything that is x to the left hand side. And then we can factor our x out, giving us overall. Okay, if we were to bring um, sx times log of b to the other side, subtracting it, we are going to get mx log of a plus, no, minus, I'm sorry, sx log of b. And we're going to bring n log of a to the right hand side by, subtra by subtracting. So t log of b minus n log of a. Now we can factor out the x here. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Let us do this real quick. Parentheses around everything x here. Now we can divide both sides by m log of a minus s log of b under the condition that m log of a is not equal to s log of b. Then the formula holds for each and every random arbitrary m, a, s and b. Meaning we're going to get that x is equal to, oh, and that's a big formula, t log of b minus n log of a divided by m log of a minus s log of b. I want you guys to notice how cool this formula is. It's, it's kind of anti-symmetric. We have something log of b minus something log of a divided by something log of a minus something log of b. So under right conditions we can actually get numerator and denominator to be equal and so on and so forth. See what you can do with this formula and I hope you did enjoy what testing today. I think that this formula is pretty cool and this is the generalized formula for solving exponential equations of this type. And if you did enjoy what you have seen today and if you are curious about more calculus, um, algebra and all of this cool stuff that we have done today, then the contents of today's sponsor Brilliant might be the perfect fit for you. If you're not yet familiar with my main spider brilliant, then I might as well give you a tiny little but spicy introduction about what this platform is all about. Brilliant is your best online learning source for all topics STEM. If you want to learn something in the STEM field, be it the mathematics that we did today, physics, computer sciences, chemistry, doesn't matter what you want to learn, what you have upcoming in your studies at university, at school, Brilliant definitely got something up their sleeve for you. Now the best thing about Brilliant is their interactive learning concept. As mentioned before, nearly 70 interactive courses in all topics STEM. Interactive means that we are going to take a look at a graph, for example, the graph of the logarithm. And then you're going to have a little lever there with an A, for example, and the A is going to stand for the base. And then you're going to track the A around and you're going to notice how the logarithm is going to change under the change of the base that you have done there or maybe even the change of the argument or both at the same time. And this is how you're going to learn over on Brilliant in a highly intuitive and interactive fashion by playing around with graphics, graphs and other things that you are normally not going to find in your pure mathematics courses or maybe even the things that you do at school. It's a lot of fun to play around with their courses and I for myself am an avid Brilliant user and also enjoy. I'm using it on a regular basis, on a weekly basis at that because especially if I'm teaching at school 
um, for, for example geometry it's just highly useful for my own purposes and showing it in class even though the courses are in English and my students in sixth grade are not very good in English they can still understand the little proofs that brilliant throws into the geometry courses like for example it's my most favorite example I just love to show it here on camera and just in, in the video in itself um, it's with the proof of the interior angles and the sum of the interior angles see if you take a look at the graphic that doesn't really matter where I choose a corner to be on the screen if I transform the triangle little animation is going to show you that um, all the angles added together are still going to give you 180 degrees and it's such a simple proof and such a little visualization it's crazy but it really helps the students understand the concept of sum of interior angles and they're going to remember it for all times I really had no problems this year teaching my students geometry with the help of Brian and maybe it's something you can learn from too and maybe this little introduction to Brian really sparked your curiosity so I invite you to try it out today big portion of it for free by using the link down there at the top of the description brilliant.org slash maths with it you're going to get free access to big portion of brilliant already but more importantly the first 200 people to actually make clicky clicky on the linky get 20% off an annual appearance subscription which is a great deal considering how much content they have available on the website already nearly 70 interactive courses it's a ton each course takes a bunch of hours to go through so yeah so much content available and they are also adding new content on a regular or monthly basis that you're virtually never going to run out of content over on their website so definitely make sure to check it out and support the channel this way and I thank you guys for watching and if you did enjoy what you have seen today subscribe to the channel also subscribe to Flemmy's Sword check out stemage.com and stemage.eu and um, also as mentioned before Flemmy's Sword I'm creating wood over there look at that it's not a chessboard it's, it's not it's not a chess board but it looks like whoa it looks really good in this light hey that's a mahogany spotted maple cutting board it smells very good very sweet mahogany has a very dis distinct smell to it but yeah um, I'm creating shit like this over on the second channel check it out would it really support me and up until next video I wish you guys a flammable day see ya